I'm Dan Parkinson. I'm a general contractor by trade, and I also have a uh, bachelor's degree in engineering, and I designed and built this home. Some of the favorite features of the house are the details that echo the architecture pioneered by the Green Brothers in Pasadena 100 years ago. I love the axial symmetry of the house. If you look at the floor plan, there's a strong access forming uh, from the living room entry, dining area, front hallway to the back of the house, so oriented north-south. And the house is really well sited on the lot as well. It's an it's a unusual lot configuration. So the floor plan needed to be designed to complement that uh, difficult uh, lot shape, and it does. I used a concrete turf block for the driveway instead of pouring a standard concrete driveway. It's a concrete block with a geometrical design. It has almost like an Escher effect. It's almost mesmerizing. A very important function that architecture must serve in the design of a residence is to provide a transition from the outside to the inside of the home. And rather than have an abrupt transition, I like to make that in at least three stages, from the outside, to the front porch, to the, in, to the entry, and then to the rest of the house. So really four in, in that respect. I tried hard to design that front porch so that it made the person standing there feel that they were in a different space they were just six feet away, preparing them to enter in through the front door into the entry of the home, which then prepares them for the rest of the home. I like to design axial relations from room to room, either symmetrically or asymmetrically. So if you stand in this family room here, you'll see that it li the doorway lines up perfectly in the middle with the entry, which then lines up with the dining room to the other side, which is at a 90 degree angle to the front door, to the hallway, to the back of the house, and the rooms are arranged asymmetrically along that spine. If a room was a certain width, I had to have a certain length to meet the proportion and balance that with the ceiling height. And this family room is a good example of that. The fireplace designed with those proportions in mind, so it wasn't too small, it wasn't too big. Um, and I use formulas that architects have used for thousands of years to arrive at those ratios. But you're not aware of them mathematically, you're aware of them visually when you go into the room and you know that it feels right it's because I've done my work on that mathematical side. Regarding the kitchen I especially like how the large French doors allow access and communicate with the family room that we're sitting in and also the outdoor patio. Well when I when I designed the home I intended for the basement to be used as an office, and so I built a basement access off of the driveway. It's so much nicer than having to walk through the house. My uh, main effort in designing the master suite was to create a, uh, a space that could be used as a retreat for the, the people that lived here. So, so they had some separation between them and the bedrooms and the living spaces downstairs and try to uh, ensure that the window placement and the inclusion of the balcony would provide the level of seclusion and intimacy that I was looking for. And, uh, I think it turned out wonderfully. A very subtle but beautiful detail uh, is uh, illustrated by the balcony handrails on the second floor off the master suite. Architecturally, is known as a cloud motif. If you look at it carefully, you'll see that the handrails drop at the edges. Uh, all the, the handrail and the guardrails do that, and it provides such a, a soft uh, image. The owner of the home, Mike Ray, and I have stayed in close contact over the years, and at one point, it became uh, necessary for him to build some additional space for his uh, professional needs. I volunteered the idea of designing and building something that would be compatible with the architecture of the home, but, but a little unique. He originally had thought uh, a rectangle would probably be sufficient, but uh, looking at it, I thought, I bet if we bent this at about a 60 degree angle and we made a, a soft L shape, this would be really neat because it would back it into that corner and give you a little private space and uh, a more public space in this, in this studio. And so he let me do it and we poured a 12 inch thick slab and 
And uh, uh, again, everything was hand selected, cut, routed, sanded. And we decided to use a corrugated metal roof on that instead of the wood shakes. And it, it just dovetails beautifully into the rest of the house. My favorite architect is Andrea Palladio. He posited that there are three criteria that have to be accomplished in any structure in order for it to be considered perfect. Uh, the first is that it needs to be fit for its intended purpose. And the second is that it needs to be built out of high quality materials. And the third is it has to be beautiful. So you can drive throughout any neighborhood in any city in the United States and you'll see a lot of homes that meet one or maybe two of those criteria, but it's a rare home or building that meets all three criteria. This home meets all three of those criteria. 